So uh, I, I'm excited uh, to be here today. I'm excited to share part of my life with you. Um, and part of my life is Bill Bennett and Lisa. Uh, so I spent five years of my life deployed with Bill and Lisa. Um, they are ministers to the soldiers at Crew Ministry in, uh, at Fort Leonard Wood. Uh, Bill and I first met kind of on speaker phone. Uh, he was up at the 103rd ESC and I was down at a, at, at a smaller brigade and uh, his boss at the time, Joe Burton, asked me if I would come up and be the deputy chaplain. Well, by the time I got up there, they had left. They were getting ready to go to Poland. Uh, the deputy that was supposed to take over had been removed. I didn't have a chaplain assistant. I didn't have anything. And here I am in a one-star command going, what do I do? <laughs> and by the way, I'd never really been in the reserves before either. I literally had to look up what an ESC was. Um, Bill ended up coming back, uh, and we began to serve together. We, uh, our first uh, kind of deployment that, that we went on was to Bulgaria in a thing called Saber Guardian. And Bill had found a school, I think he worked with the Civil Affairs, and there was a school downtown of the, where the base was. And at that place, the teachers have to take care of all the school stuff. So Bill uh, got around with the soldiers and asked them if they would like to help out and we went and we painted that school, we painted the playground, we fixed it all up for them. The soldiers said that was their favorite part of that entire uh, deployment that we went on. Our next deployment was we both got a call from the Pentagon saying, would you like to go to Puerto Rico? <laughs> and it was right after Hurricane Maria. And uh, we went there together as a team. Um, and uh, he was a senior uh, religious Affairs uh, NCO, and uh, I was the deputy forward, and uh, we spent some wonderful time in Puerto Rico <laughs> walking a few miles for a hamburger, and <laughs> to only find out if we only paid a dollar, there was a bus that went there. Uh, a and bus went there. <laughs> and uh, at that time, we, I would also, s which became a pattern in our life, I sent him away with the priest to go to the Virgin Islands, and uh, he would go there and come back and serve them. Our next deployment was uh, with the 103rd ESC became the Theater Sustainment Camp Command. Basically uh, all supplies, medical, personnel, everything that go into the Middle East in Army Central Command, the 17 countries that make up the, the Middle East. Uh, we were the senior uh, chaplains over that. And the senior chaplain team. And uh, we, we went together to Iraq, and I brought him back. Uh, we were in Kuwait together, and then I took him to Afghanistan, and I left him. Um, <laughs> and then I had to drag him back. Uh, he was having such a great ministry in Afghanistan, but uh, they kept asking me, where was this team? <laughs> like, Bill, you got to come back. Man. I know you love it there. I know you're doing a great ministry there, but you got to come back. Like, I can't answer these questions anymore. <laughs> can't cover them. you got to come back. And uh, we, I drug him back to, uh, to Kuwait, and we finished up our tour together. He was supposed to get on, a, on a, a plane and head back to the United States and got kicked off of that and stayed back with me again. <laughs> and uh, so for almost five years, we served together as a chaplain team. Uh, whenever I can speak to um, Bill and Lisa, and their dedication to the Lord. Let me tell you what, you would never find Bill not sharing gospel with somebody, no matter where he was. You'd never find him uh, wanting, not wanting to be in a Bible study, learning more about God in the midst of it. You would never find him that, that anywhere other than wanting to disciple someone. While we were in Kuwait, while he was in Afghanistan, he literally had people that he was discipling right there. On those places, I can speak to him. I am proud that I got to serve with him, um, and I'm just going to let them come and share what they they do at Fort Leonard Wood. But I, before that, I'd like to paint just a little picture. Could you imagine? Could you imagine for a moment being in a theater 
with a thousand soldiers teaching a Bible study. That's what they do on a weekly basis. Can you imagine thousands of soldiers every year coming to know Christ, making professions of faith? That's what they do. So, Bill and Lisa, come forward and right. share. Can we show the video that's on that first slide first? Thanks. The military ministry of crew focuses on three things. We win people to Christ. We build them up in their faith, and we send them out into the world to do the same thing. We're located in all the basic training sites for the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. We're also at operational locations around the United States and in over 30 countries around the world. And what we are trying to do is to introduce young men and women to Jesus Christ. It's a hard ministry, and without Jesus Christ, military members don't have a chance. We believe that the military ministry of crew must be engaged in healing families, healing marriages, and healing the members of the military so that lives can be changed and the gospel of Jesus Christ can be taken to the entire world. This is a critical mission and it is a mission we must win. But we can't do it alone. We need you. You are the hands and feet of Christ. You can take the gospel to the global military community. You can make an eternal difference in the lives of men and women of all the militaries all over the world. We're asking you to consider joining this great task. The needs of the military may change, but one thing we are sure of is that the heartbeat of this ministry will always be to introduce the men and women of the military to Jesus Christ. This is why we do what we do. What about you? Thank you, Chaplain Pace, and I, I think you're going to retire when, did you say? May. May. I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to call him anything but Chaplain Pace. I, I can't call him Steve. <laughs> and Pastor Pace doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> so it's just going to have to be Chaplain Pace for the rest of our life. Um, he can call me whatever he wants to. And then um, I want to thank you for inviting us. I want to thank... Christway Church for having us, and I want to thank the worship team. For giving me an opportunity to worship. We don't get that much to be with a body of Christ and to get to worship. My wife gets it far more than I do because she plays on a worship team. But um, I get it so very seldom, and, and music is a, is a most excellent vehicle to help me get to a point of worship. So I just want to say thank you all to each of you. Um, we are Bill and Lisa Bennett. Uh, we work for Crew Military, a division of Campus Crusade for Christ International. Campus Crusade is an interdenominational missions organization, and it's headquartered in Orlando, Florida. It's known as Crew here in the United States because they have a stateside ministry, and we specialize in evangelism and discipleship. Crew, or Campus Crusade, was founded in 1952 by Dr. Bill Bright as an outreach to university students in L.A. And then Crew Military was formed in 1972 as a response to the need for soldiers deploying to Vietnam to hear the good news of Christ. Now, I've been on staff for approximately 30 years. Um, I can't do the math because I was arguing with my wife on the way up here. I have not been on staff 30 years, but apparently I have. Um, <laughs> I met, Lisa, I met Lisa during my first ministry assignment in San Antonio, Texas, um, where we shared the gospel, discipled soldiers and airmen at both Fort Sam Houston and Lackland Air Force Base. Um, Lisa's been on staff for approximately 25 years, and she also began ministering at Fort Sam and Lackland, excelling in ministry to international soldiers and as well as the female recruits there. Now, we have been at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. It's a little more than 100 miles from here, and it is affectionately known in the Army as Fort Lost in the Woods. And there's a good reason for that. It's very similar to here, except for we have woods and y'all have fields. And so we've been there sharing the great news and the ways of God's kingdom uh, for approximately 15 years. 
And the question comes up, why? Why would we choose there? We choose there because the military goes all over the world. I want to share with you, whoa, I want to share with you a little bit of what ministry looks like for me personally. So I'm going to use some language from Acts 1-8 to help with this. And the Bible's too tiny, so I got to have bigger print. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. It's not going. Okay, it's supposed to go. There we go. So my, my Jerusalem, my one, Alyssa and I meet approximately once a week to pray with each other. I encourage her. I challenge her as she's finding her footing. She's just now realizing that God has called her to a more purposeful ministry. My Judea is the PWOC board. PWOC stands for Protestant Women of the Chapel. And it is a ministry of the military chapels all over the world to military service women and military wives. I've been on the board, well, I've been involved with PWOC about almost as long as I've been on staff with crew military. And I usually sit on the board because that is where I can have great impact as I help budding leaders develop their skills in ministry. My Samaria is the PWOC body. So if you think of the PWOC board as the leadership of a church, the PWOC body would be the congregation. We have about 100 ladies who show up at Fort Leonard Wood for Protestant Women of the Chapel weekly gatherings and Bible studies. And by developing relationships, I can get a feel for the needs of the group as a whole and then I work with the, the board to develop programs and Bible studies that meet those needs. Now, my ends of the earth would be community outreach and basic training Bible studies. Basic stu or Bible studies for basic trainees is one of the places where Bill and I, our ministry actually works together. We, with a small team of volunteers, teach foundational Christian truths to thousands of soldiers each week, really. Uh, right now, it's 2,000 soldiers a week, and they're in basic training. Uh, they learn about the Bible and how to navigate it. They get the gospel and key discipling next steps. We give them Bibles and biblical materials to help them grow, and we teach them to share their testimony in conjunction with evangelism so that when the military sends them out, they can take what they've learned out into the world and teach others. So we're the missionaries, missionaries that stay put. They are the missionaries that go out into the world. We also host evangelistic and discipleship dinners at our house with a purpose for different people who come in. Bill, you want to take over? Um, I hope you all noticed on the previous slide. Would you go back to that one for just a second? I don't know. We'll try. Can we go back one? Because I want you all to look at the top. There were three photos. And it's not going to go back. Don't worry about it. But I hope you all <laughs> noticed. Uh, oh, please do. Yeah. No, one more, please. Oh, two. Ah. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we, were, we were known as the two grumpy old men. And if y'all can imagine Chaplain Pace being grumpy, you know, he's seldom grumpy, but I could make him grumpy. Yeah, I, I, I'm good at that. And we were constantly bickering back and forth. And so uh, one of the other chaplains we worked with just started posting the two grumpy old men from um, the Muppets. Every, every time there was a picture of us, he would put their faces on it. If you can go forward now, Lisa. All right. So Lisa and I don't minister together a whole lot. We get to minister on Sunday morning uh, at the basic training Bible studies. And right now we have a teacher. So we've got two teachers and two people that help. We only have a volunteer team of four people. And actually, Jerry, who is teaching, is, I believe, from Alton, just down the road. I know they come up here about once a month to visit family members that they have in the area. And um, so this slide here is just meant to give uh, yes, some sort of concept of the breadth of our ministry. So I think that is a recent Bible study. That's one Bible study right there. 1,000 soldiers in it. We have two of those each Sunday morning, 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And then 
The fellow up at the top is a guy that I meet individually on his lunch break once a week. The other, is, the two at the bottom are inter, an international soldier uh, from Uganda. And then there's an older photo in the middle. And that was pretty much at the PX in the coffee shop. And so that's just, a, you know, the breadth of what we do. Now, I personally love teaching and training people. I was blessed to be able to do a lot of that while we were deployed because Chaplain Pace saw that that's my heart and he gave me opportunities to do that. So I, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I retired from the Army Reserves in July. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> and I gained about 100 days back into my calendar year just by retiring from that because they have us working a lot. That enables me to spend more time in discipleship with small groups and one-on-one. -on -one. I currently have 11 men that I meet with. Most weekly, some more sporadically, it depends on their schedule. And each one of these guys are currently, start. now I started with them about two months ago. Each one of them are now charged with and some very hesitantly starting their own discipleship group. The second generation, so to say. And so... I'd like to do a quick exercise with y'all. I know that Chaplain Pace or Pastor Pace or however I'm supposed to refer to him has been working with y'all on, is it the one? Who's your one? And so we got to see the football in there. So I would like y'all to get that little piece of paper and that little golf pencil that's somewhere around you and pull it out. And I would also like you to, if you have a Bible or your phone or however you use them, find the passage Acts 1.8. And my wife told me I should flip there too because that would give you all the time to also find it. But I can't read it unless I put those readers on. So y'all can correct me, but I'm going to try the BBV, the Bill Bennett version of it. And I believe it goes something like this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost ends of the earth. It's going to be something very similar to that. But that is the Bill Bennett version. So I want you to take your piece of paper and your pencil. And you have the choice of putting a little dot right in the middle of it. Or draw a very small stick person. Because that's you. That dot represents you. That stick person represents you. So go ahead and do it. This is, this is time to do stuff. All right. Now that you're done with that. You know, the, the passage says those disciples at that time, and we actually covered that in the Sunday school class. Y'all all should have been in Sunday school. That was a great class. There was a lot of laughter in there. But, you know, <laughs> the whole idea is disciples of Jesus will be witnesses. And he names for those people at that time specific geographic areas, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost ends of the earth. So Jerusalem is where they were at that point. This is, where am I? Godfrey. <laughs> this is Godfrey. So that would be your Jerusalem. So, you know, what I'm going to challenge you right now is I'm going to challenge you to think geographically, just like they were. So what are your geographic circles in an ever expanding area outwards? But I also want you to think relationally because I'm going to tie this into the one. So your Jerusalem would be Godfrey, unless, of course, you live over in Alton or wherever and you come over here. But wherever you are geographically would be your geographic Jerusalem. But relationally, it is who do you interact with? frequently on a weekly basis. And so I want you to think of the one, but because I believe you were challenged to pray for one person who is not in the kingdom of God and you want to see them come into the kingdom of God. Am I right with that? Is that what y'all were challenged with? Is that what the one is? All right. So I want you to write their name in that little circle within Jerusalem. That's one of your ones. Now I'm going to double what Chaplain Pace has challenged you with. Now, not only are you to pray for somebody who's not in the kingdom, now I'm going to tell you to become hands and feet for also somebody who is already in the kingdom. That's called discipleship. So the one, you're praying for evangelistic moment. Now I'm saying, I'm not leaving it at one. You get two. Two categories. So who do you interact with within your normal week that is not a Christian? Put their name in there. 
Oh, and draw that. My wife said, make sure I tell you to draw that circle. So draw a circle around that person and put their name in there. And then I want you to put a second name. Who is a Christian that you can, as it says in Hebrews, or in, in the Psalms, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens man. And then in Hebrews, it says, when you come together, basically you spur one another onto good works. That's one of my favorite passages because it means you get to kick somebody in the rear. And so who can you spur on to good works? That is a Christian that you interact with frequently. That can just be through a text. That can be through a phone call. That can be, hey, here's what I read in my Bible this week. I mean, we got that in the Sunday school class just a little while ago. I was loving it. I was like, this is great. All right, so I think you've got the concept. You can take your geographic area and begin to think of it, but I want you to think in those two relationships, a non-Christian and a Christian. So the next circle, draw another circle, please. And that is going to be Judea, no, Jerusalem, Judea. Come on, Lisa, click that thing. <laughs> so, so Judea was basically like the state, or if you want to just keep it the, um, I guess, a county, a large county or an area around that. But that is the area that Jerusalem was the capital of. And so now, relationally, I want you to think of somebody that you still interact with occasionally. You know, but they're, they're nowhere near as close as you interact several times a week. So this is somebody you might interact with once every two weeks of something of that nature. So for me, that's, there's quite a few people. And I, you know, my, as Lisa was telling you, her Judea, my Judea are those 11 guys right now. I choose to interact with them weekly. And so they're moving from Judea into Jerusalem. But I want you to think, who is another person, another non-Christian, that you don't interact with much, but you'd like to see coming to the kingdom of God? Put their name within that circle of Judea. Now I want you to think of a, a Christian that you interact periodically with, but they're not so close that you see them all the time, that you are going to purpose to encourage them in their walk with God. So you should have two names in Jerusalem, two names in Judea. Give me another circle, please. Now we're going to Samaria. Samaria was a place that the Jewish people tried to avoid. It's like St. Louis. <laughs> I hate driving through St. Louis. You know, however, there's someone there. She is in the back. She's got, you know, the t-shirt on, feed my peeps. And I know that Chaplain Pace used to do some stuff with some homeless people down in uh, East St. Louis and other areas of like that. Well, basically St. Louis would be my Samaria for sure. I don't frequent Samaria. I try to avoid it, but I can purpose to pray for someone or a group of people that is in that Samaria. So go ahead and put that name down. That's someone that is not a Christian. And it doesn't have to be St. Louis, but it's just, you know, somewhere that's a little further out. My normal Samaria would be my family members in Georgia. I don't interact with them a whole lot. But I am going to be interacting with them this week. And so now think of a Christian that you know of by name that is out there. That you don't hardly ever interact with, but you would have to go out of your way to interact with. I don't know those people, but you do know someone. Mine would be. Um, he, I love him like a brother, but he lives in the UP in Michigan, Joseph Basso. He's a pastor of a small church up there, but I will purpose to call him and he will purpose to call me. It's probably about once every three or four months. Now, if I can have one more circle, the uttermost ends of the earth, that's a more difficult one. Unless you go Chaplain Pace and I have been there. I sent my wife pictures of dead camels beside the road. You know, that was, you know, here, here's what we deal with out here. So you might have to purpose, just like in Samaria, you might have to purpose to focus your attentions on something that you can't necessarily be physically involved with unless you go on a mission trip. But you can choose, because I'm sure that we're not the only missionaries this church support. And I would just tell you, all missionaries that y'all support would love to get a postcard or a text from you or an email, just occasionally. 
Just saying, hey, I prayed for you today. They would love that. That's reaching to the ends of the earth. Basically, you have sent somebody in your place to go. That's what we're hoping to do with all those young soldiers. And we know that's not true, that they're going to do it. But there are a bunch of them that do go. And they're going to the uttermost ends of the earth. And so hopefully you have a name in each one of the two names, actually, in each one of those circles. Feel free to put more names in there. We have another quick video, and this is going to tie some stuff together. So I'd like you all to watch it, and then we're going to wrap some stuff up. One. That is what it takes to change the world. One man and one woman changed the world when they chose to disobey God and sin. And the world was thrown into a curse of death and darkness. One man, holy and perfect came to the world to save it from the curse and change the world through his life, death, and resurrection. One. That is what it takes to change the world. Did you know that you, too, can change the world? Just you. One person. If you invited one person every six months to become a crew military team member, spending time mentoring, developing and equipping that one person, you could then send them out to do the same. Imagine if 12 people in crew military understood the power of one. These 12 people would multiply into a team of over 3,000 in only four years. If 50 people believed in the power of one, in four years these 50 people would grow exponentially into a ministry of almost 13,000, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to military members and their families all over the world. This is the power of one. It starts with you. One person doing the work of Jesus Christ. One. That is what it takes to change the world. So the question is, really, what about you? What about you? Are you willing to be a disciple of Jesus and to make disciples? Because in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 on, Jesus told his disciples, he said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, and I will be with you to the very end of the age. That is his command. You know, I, I don't have a whole lot of affection for a lot of people. But I know, the, I know when my commander gave me a command. And a long time ago, he said, someone else challenged me, will you be that one? So I'm, I'm putting it out to you. Because I did a head count real quick. There's about 44 to 46 people in here. I can't count real well. I'm from Georgia. But somewhere in there. And uh, so are you going to be the one? Acts 1.8. I gave you an exercise so that you can be the one to two, four, eight. Is there four circles times two? So, so you can be the one to eight people. That just said that if 12 people would take one, peep, one person, one peep, every six months and just encourage them to do the work of God, that that would multiply to 3,000 people in four years. If 40, I can't, I can't divide that quickly, but if 44 of y'all here would take one person every six months and pour into them in four years, that would be a little under 13,000 people. Just you here in this church. 13,000 people either hearing the gospel or, you know, because I think all of anything about the kingdom of God is the gospel. So they're going to hear the gospel, whether they're a non-Christian or a Christian, they are going to hear the gospel. So who are the ones on your piece of paper? I'm not asking you to tell me, but uh, you should at least turn to somebody and let them hold you accountable to those eight people that are there. Think of the power of putting, inputting your time and efforts to build the kingdom of God. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be given to you. You can build the kingdom of God with those that you're normally interacting with. And it could soon be 13,000 people that are doing that. 
Now, we, Lisa and I, crew military, may be able to help you reach the uttermost ends of the earth through our work at Lost in the Woods. Y'all are already doing that collectively as a church. I know that. You, as individuals, though, are the hands and feet of Christ. We need fellow Christians to partner with us to share the gospel to our militaries globally. You can make an eternal difference in the lives of family, friends, acquaintances, and strangers in your world and in our world. They're together, but there's different slices. And we have a responsibility to, as a body of Christ, to have some overlap, but also to work together. So I'm going to ask each of you that is here today to join us, Lisa and I, in our global task at Fort Leonard Wood. Now, we have thought of several ways that you can help. Uh, I know that we left a leave piece in all the chairs there beside it. I know that there is what we would call a giving envelope, that if you wanted to put a check in and mail it to crew, it eventually makes its way into our account that we can use those. But here's where I want you to think of how it could be used, how you personally can make a difference. Hey, Chaplain Pace, why don't you bring three or four people down for a mission trip to Lost in the Woods for a weekend? You could get to, not him, he don't get to do it if he comes, but you would get to share your testimony, three minutes. If he says they're good to go, you could share the lesson that I would give you. You could just take 10 to 12 to 15 minutes and share the gospel very quickly to hundreds or thousands of soldiers. Right now, our Bible studies are a thousand strong. The first one's a little more than a thousand, about 1,200. The second one will be a little under a thousand. So if you had come there today instead of us coming here, you could have been part of sharing the gospel with 2,000 people. Would you pray for us individually? Pick up that little reminder card. Look on, I don't know, something stuck on your refrigerator. And every time you go for a bonbon, you just go, okay, I'll pray for Bill. Yeah. So would you, would you join our financial support team? I retired July 26th. And when I retired from the Army Reserves, I gained 100 days back to use for evangelism and discipleship. Which also increased the small daily cost because now I drive back and forth a lot and don't get reimbursed for that. Uh, I also lost $600 a month in income. We need to replace that and replace about another $400 a month in monthly support. That's been lost over the last three years due to several supporters graduating on to heaven. So would you as an individual or a family underwrite the cost of the monthly meal at our home with soldiers? Uh, that would be about $30 to $60 a month. Would you contribute $10 towards the weekly coffee fund where we meet and encourage and evangelize, disciple and mentor military members and their family members over coffee at, the, at some of the local coffee shops. Thank you for the donuts today. I told Chaplain Pace, every good Sunday school has donuts because I grew up in the Methodist church. <laughs> Would you choose any amount to help defray the cost of the printing and the materials uh, that are used in our larger groups? So I know that we go through over 10,000 Bibles a year and thank God that people donate most of those to us because they're approximately $5.50 a piece. And so you have several different ways. You can, I've, somebody who's far more technology or minded than me, like my wife, there's a QR code. So you can take a picture and that will take you straight to our little giving page with crew. And uh, you can do whatever it is that y'all do there. What is it? I don't know. She'll tell you. You can make a donation. I don't know. You use your credit card. You use, I don't know, bank account. That's, I don't know. Yeah. I should not put my hands in the pocket with that thing. So y'all can use the envelopes I left there while I sit here with my hands crossed. Those envelopes will go to crew and, uh, it is a faith-based ministry. So the salary that Lisa and I uh, draw off of, it's very similar to like this church. If the money don't go in the pot, there's no money to pay the salaries. And uh, all contributions should be made payable to crew. Uh, and then they farm it back out to us as we need it. They pay our salary and then we reimburse expenses. And um, I just want to encourage you 
to include us in your uttermost ends of the earth. So please put Bill and Lisa in that circle. And then y'all can peg that circle to your refrigerator door. And so every time you go to the refrigerator, you'll think to pray for at least 10 people. And so I was encouraged in Sunday school where they talked about, oh yes, and so now I'm praying all the time. I'm praying in my car and I'm doing this. You know, exactly. And then for us and for the other missionaries that y'all support, I would say send them a postcard, send them a text, send them an email saying, I prayed for you today. Thank you again, Chaplain Pace, for inviting us. Um, thank you all for putting up with us. And uh, Chaplain Pace, would you mind just coming up and I'm going to turn it back over to you. You can close in prayer or whatever you'd like to do. Well, thanks. Thanks, Bill, for coming and Lisa. Um, I want you to know that, that uh, I think some of you know, but you may not know. I never, I never require you to do anything I don't do myself. I am a monthly contributor to, to this ministry. Uh, that's part of what God called me to do. God called me to give my first fruits to the church, and then anything that he blesses me, I, I support missions that God lays on my heart. And I encourage you to do the same thing, whatever missions that God lays on your heart. Um, not only are they one of our missionaries that we support at this church, along with Feed My Peeps, along with... Um, uh, the other ministries that we do next week, we're going to learn about a, a, another ministry. Talk about the the ends of the earth. Uh, it's about a group that res, rescues um, families out of the brickyards in Pakistan, and we'll hear from them next month. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. But you're making a difference in the world. You're making a difference right here in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, even the uttermost ends of the world. And how do we do that? The biggest thing you can do is, like I said, I, I do encourage you, every single one of you can do this. Pray for them. They need it. Trust me, when God is using you, Satan attacks you. And he will attack the things that matter the most. So I, I ask you to pray for their marriage, pray for their family, pray for their son, because that's what seems to be where Satan attacks the most. Pray God continues to use them. Um, believe it or not, when Jesus did his ministry and, and we begin to see the big revival, you realize it was Roman soldiers that accepted Christ that took the gospel message to Rome. When we hear about the church in Rome that, that Paul is writing to, nobody knows who started that. And we believe it was started by Roman soldiers that were there at the foot of the cross that became believers. And they're taking literally what learning about Jesus Christ. The military is paying missionaries to go all over the world <laughs> and uh, share their faith. So um, we're going to close out. I'm going to invite the, the praise team up. Um, and if you would, if you want to, Bill, Lisa, I, I, I haven't done this before, but I'd like to do this. Um, I'm going to ask them to come forward. And for those of you who would like to just put your hands on them and just pray over them right now, I, in, I invite you to come and let's, let's pray over them. Come on forward, Bill.
We're going to do one more song to close out the service if you guys wouldn't mind standing and joining us. <laughs>